Mustering cattle is a daily ritual for the MacArthur family. So this is what you would traditionally call coastal country. It's traditional bit breeder country. The MacArthur's have worked the property just inland from the coast for four generations. It's all about soil here. It's about growing good grass to then actually raise cattle. So the very bottom of the whole thing is 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 good soil. It's good soil and the better the the better the soil, the better the grass. That soil is also at the centre of the debate about the Great Barrier Reef. A series of disasters has hit the reef hard, including two waves of hot water in 2016 and 17. But climate change isn't the only problem. Land-based industries like grazing and cane farming are blamed for sending damaging sediments and nutrients down rivers and out to the reef, making corals less resilient. There's plants, there's, you know, there's little fish swimming around in there. So uh, this, this, but this water flows straight out? Into the reef. Into the reef, it's not yep. that far. How far is it from here? From where we're standing, it's probably seven or eight kilometres to the actual salt water. So you're very aware of, of what goes in here and the effect that it has out there? Oh, most certainly, yeah. Rob MacArthur loves the reef as much as anybody, but he rails against Queensland's Vegetation Management Act amended earlier this year to try to reduce sediment runoff. People in the local area have got more knowledge of the local area than someone who's stuck in an office in George Street. The government updated the act to slow land clearing after satellite images showed the state had lost 400,000 hectares of trees in just one year. The MacArthur's say more trees doesn't always mean less runoff and that farmers should be able to manage the balance between trees and grass without government interference. This is our asset, we don't want it out in the reef. Maintaining ground cover and grass cover is, is paramount in our in our management and by doing that we're not just protecting ourselves we're actually protecting something that that the greater population are, are certainly concerned about. I don't think anyone's suggesting that graziers are solely responsible yeah. for it but the argument is that this is one of the contributing uh, causes of, of sediment runoff is it do, you know do you do you accept that? No. 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 Out here on Fitzroy Island the sediment meets the reef. All rivers do push, um, will push sediment and nutrients out naturally. But what we know is that the land use changes that, that we've made in the catchments of the Great Barrier Reef have really increased the amount of sediment and, and the amount of nutrients that, that are coming out of those river systems. Fitzroy Island, just off Cairns, is one of the inner reefs affected by land-based runoff. Eddie Game is the lead scientist for the Australian branch of the Nature Conservancy, the world's biggest conservation group. He's been monitoring the impact of water runoff on the inner reefs. Eddie, we're got a tiny little baby patch of reef here. It's it's not dead. Yeah, you're, you're right, Peter. By, by no means dead. You can see that uh, living coral on the side. This big massive coral or parietes coral, but you also see a kind of grey, that dull brown colour that's not coral. It's sediment and algae um, make it really hard for the coral to compete with. Earlier this year, the Nature Conservancy published a study which showed just how far runoff was spreading out. The results shocked them. In big wet seasons like the one we saw in 2010, 2011, the runoff from the Burdekin carried nutrients or elevated nutrients on reefs over an area of about 500 kilometres sort of north, south, up, yeah. all the way up here. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly, nearly 400 kilometres, over 400 kilometres went north and about 100 kilometres went south. And that, and that, we know that elevated the nutrient levels on nearly 400 reefs across the GBR. The biggest plan ever devised for the reef lies at the heart of all policy decisions. It's called Reef 2050. The original targets called for 80% reduction in nutrients, 50% in sediment. Those water quality targets are highly ambitious and the Queensland Government is under intense pressure to prove it's taking action. 
The MacArthur's believe their industry is taking the fall. I don't think the problems on the reef are overstated, but I definitely think they're used for political agendas. Well, we just feel like we get taken for granted and we're just something that can just get pushed aside. Sugarcane farmers understand the grazier's frustration. Cane is the region's other main agricultural product and the source of the reef's other major pollutant. The nutrients that we see in our river systems, um, the, the stuff that we're really concerned about in the reef comes principally from fertilised crops, so cane would be a big piece of that. The Reef 2050 report says 78% of man-made nutrients in the water come from fertiliser used on farms across the region. Those nutrients feed outbreaks of harmful algae and the crown of thorn starfish. This now is at best practice. Paul Gregory runs one of the biggest cane farms around Cairns. I love this part of the country. I love the fact that you know, I'm custodian here for a while and then trying to do the best I can with, with what was left um, to me by my father. The pressure on cane farmers to reduce nutrients running into the waterways has forced him to redesign his farm and reduce his fertiliser use to 30% of what it was a decade ago. When I wake up in the morning in 2018 and look at the jobs in front of me and compare that to 1978, and looked at the jobs in front of me, it's totally different. For years, farmers were deeply suspicious of computer models that showed the pollutants running off their land. Paul says trust is being rebuilt by treating cane farmers as part of the solution rather than the problem. Growers are now changing practice and it's voluntary. And there's programs in place from federal and state government that actually help us to do that. So that relationship is intrinsic to the future of this industry and intrinsic to the future of the Great Barrier Reef. But runoff in Queensland is still way short of targets. Without better results, the threat of government intervention looms. I guess my biggest fear is that we get regulated out of existence and the reef still dies. While the government might be focused on farming and grazing, for the public, the industry that intersects most visibly with the reef is the ports. Ports are really the lifeblood of the region. Without ports, we would have significantly less GDP in terms of our imports and exports, so we wouldn't have the royalties that we have that come out of the commodities as well. Whether it's sugar, beef or coal, very little gets exported without the region's ports. Plans to expand at Abbott Point are on hold, but there are big projects for Cairns, Townsville and Mackay. The Regional Ports Engineering General Manager is Rochelle MacDonald. We are doing a lot of work on our existing assets to try and increase the sorts of trades that we can bring through uh, the port. In 2014, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority was at the centre of a storm after endorsing a plan to dump the spoils from dredging at Abbott Point onto the Barrier Reef. The Authority's chairman, Russell Reichelt, is now firmly against it. I'm concerned about the impacts of dredging in a local sense. That The science tells us that it is. It does uh, create poor water quality immediately surrounding the dredge operation for a short period. I'm completely opposed to disposal of capital amounts, large amounts in the marine park, and it's now been banned. Uh, what I think the industry should do is adapt the vessels to the reef, not the reef to the vessels. Of all the industries that affect the reef, the great paradox is coal mining. Its direct impact on the reef from things like mine sediment and pollution is relatively light, but burning coal is one of the main sources of carbon that causes global warming. The link between burning fossil fuels, rising CO2 in the atmosphere and global warming is incontrovertible. The oceans absorb 90% of the extra heat in the atmosphere and reef scientist Terry Hughes says corals struggle to cope. It's, it's the number one driver of the rapid decline of the Great Barrier Reef. We can't fix everything else and ignore climate change. It's not going to work. 
I think there will always be there will always be coal. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there will always be coal. And creates a lot of work, and I think yeah, yeah, I think we need it. Yeah, definitely need it. Tony McGrath was a coal miner all his life. He used to drive graders and trucks on the Peak Downs mine until he retired four years ago. Do you think Australians really value and appreciate the the job of the miners? Yeah, I think so. It creates a lot of work. I think. Yeah, I, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think they do. Yeah. The staunch ALP and union member is part of an important political constituency fighting for mining jobs. Years ago when I started there, you went there and you stayed there, you had working days, you know, everyone was happy out there, but now it's more temporary, like labour hire, uh, fly and fly out, they're not permanent jobs and I think it's a shame. But a lot of Australians still say that the reef, the reef and mining are incompatible because of the impact that the mine has on, on climate change. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know whether or not. Peter, because I, years, you know, like 100 years ago, it was still pretty hot. You know? I, don't, I don't think it's got any hotter. I really don't. Eh? Not, not, you know, I, I don't think there's any proof there, really. Removing all the pressures on the reef is a huge technical challenge. But threaded through all of it runs the fraught politics of climate change, the economy and the environment. Do you have sympathy for those that are trying to protect the reef just a few kilometres from here? Yes, we certainly want the reef to remain there for generations. Um, bottom line is we, we probably all want the same outcome. Yeah, we just don't need to be backed into a corner and told what we can and we can't do by someone that's got no real idea of what, what is happening. I don't think there's any value in pointing the finger of blame at any one sector, uh, um, including the scientists, dare I say it, the farmers. Um, I, I think are making uh, significant progress in improving practices that reduce the amount of runoff. It's a big issue, it's not going to be solved tomorrow. <laughs>